Hello YouTube, so it's the second video on the smashed up Merc. If you haven't watched the last episode, basically, we just wanted to make sure it was straight. So we wanted to take all the slam panel off, everything that's took a hit, the bash bar, the slam panel, the bumper, the everything, the whole of the front end, basically, we made it structurally straight. We had a really stiff issue where one of the chassis legs was bent in. Luckily, thank the absolute heavens, the new slam panel that I bought come with that chassis leg and not only was it not welded, it was bolted in. So I've bolted that chassis leg out, put the new chassis leg on and it's straight. So as it sits now is where I left it last episode. The, uh, the bash bar is on, but I just wanted to make sure it's straight. So that's coming off. And now we need to tackle the bits that make the car run. So the aircon's completely smashed in, the radiator's pierced, and the intercooler is totally bent. Now we actually got a, a for these, luckily they come in a rad pack. It's a pack of them all together. It's a radiator, an aircon, and a intercooler. So we're going to be fitting that today. So let's get started. Let's move the Merc to here because I don't want to ruin the payment of the, of the soon to be green light garage. So we're going to move the Merc here and we're going to drop the coolant. It is just water in there. It is leaking a little bit of coolant because I, I've looked and it's just water in there. So I think the radiator's pierced or something's pierced on the left hand side. I'm sure there'll be something that we won't be expecting but nonetheless let's jump onto this Merc and let's actually have it running and structurally back together today. Hopefully. Right, so considering we've actually took all the slam panels off, most of the things that bolt us in are, maybe even all the things that, that bolt us in are off now. So it's just a case of getting, getting everything out of the way. And then probably just either sliding it up or sliding it out. Let's go and get the new rad pack and I'll show you what they come in and how we're going to change it over. Now, luckily enough with this, when he had the crash, all the aircon went everywhere. It just went psh, and it pissed out everywhere. So that's good because we definitely don't want to be letting off aircon out or you definitely don't want it on your fingers. I've had it on my hands when I was fitting screamer pipe to the Evo and it was probably the way I had to have my hands in like gloves full of like pseudocrine for like three days. So it genuinely like almost tore my skin off. It's really, really, really bad. It's itchy. It's horrible. I've also the cooler off because we needed to get to this leg. So let's go and get the new rad pack and then we'll start pulling things off and hopefully this should be nice and simple i'll show you the difference between this one and mine and the difference i hope i can fix so for some reason the manual and the automatic rad packs are, are different one of them has this this thing on here it's like a it, I've, it literally just looks like a coolant coolant comes in coolant goes round and and out i've no idea why that is and i don't understand why automatics would have it and why manuals would not have it except now the guy the guy who i bought the parts off said it's just automatic and manual i said manually he said this is the one without that so he did he did seem like an eligible guy so i just thought i assumed he gave me the wrong one but then when i get home i was googling it in different years swap over so for example i don't know it's strange so some years had this on manual some years had this on automatic but nonetheless i've actually looked and it just looks like it's just clamped into the side and then there's two hoses here one comes up and one comes down so i don't think it would be too much of an issue at all the intercools were fixed really annoyingly they had the like spring clips and they have to use like a screwdriver two screwdrivers and prime out uh difficult to get off but nowhere near as difficult to get off as what the internet was saying but then again not many people work on these cars or not many who are diy enthusiasts how i'd like to call myself but let's see let's drain this coolant so there's a little there's a hose here i'm just gonna take all the lines off and just let it absolutely just piss out everywhere too so you these ones might be a little bit easier than the bottom ones oh yeah the intercooler one was a pain but there we go let it all out fuck it okay so i found out that these things are actually i think it's uh like a gearbox coolant or something it cools the oil because this top line goes to here and that is definitely a like a oil i pretty sure that's like a, a oil cooler like that's acts as like a gearbox oil cooler and um, so i kind of really don't want to be undoing that from there i'm going to lose all my gearbox oil and that is something i really don't want to be doing so what i'm probably going to try and do is i'm probably going to just pull this off here and just rotate this around put the new radiator on and then rotate it back Two little tabs here you kind of need to push the push them out and then that just comes to the aircon pipes in the way so let's get this aircon pipe it's a female it's a female torch fucking hell it's on there jesus christ 
Okay, that little line was a right bastard to come off. That's in there tight, but nonetheless, there is no aircon in there, which is good. So let's just get these out of the way. Now we can uh, pull off our gearbox oil cooler thingy majig. So now we just need to fill off a couple of lines. There's a, there's some wiring down here. Hopefully that aircon pipe will comes a lot easier than the other one. Right, that seal is a joke. There's no even fucking need to have bolts on them. Absolute fucking joke, mate. So, seriously. Right, you can come out now. Oh, I've been as well. Fuck it now. So one concern I had was trying to get this aircon pipe off the bottom of that one it was an absolute joke. So luckily, this just comes up here and bolts the engine. You can see it just in there. And it, um, it actually came off a lot easier than the other side. So this one actually comes with the uh, with that one attached. So all I'm gonna have to do is leave that there, put it to the engine, not have to fuck about with that one at the bottom. And then obviously this has just been caught, this is the, the connection. So take this connection off um, and then just use this connection here. And then that'll probably be most of our difficult worries um, done. And the rest of it's just bolt on, the rest of it's just changed it over. So we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to reuse this this aircon line, uh, this one here, but I'm assuming it would go on a lot easier than it come off. But that's where we're at now, guys. There, it looks like a huge fucking V8. So that's a big engine. That is a big diesel engine. Nice little turbo there. Woo! Let's load it in. First of all, let's get these little connectors in on the bottom into position where they need to be. This goes to up there. Sliding it in. Yeah, let's bring this over because I'm going to need the clips. I would assume these need to come off. So these little clip things here. That should be able to just slide around there and clip on. I'm hoping that the clipping points are the same. So let's just get this side off. That clips on there. Perfect. Okay, so we do have a, a little bit of a difference here. So, if you see here, this just pops straight in there. That is different than the one that came off. Okay, so you see this one, it popped in there and then this little clip went around and clamped down on the wire. I don't know how or what I'm gonna do about that. The rest of it is on, so you put the intercooler pipes on and then start putting the slam panel things back on. All right, so that is the radiator and the intercooler, everything back on. So now we can actually start putting back together all the the slam panel and everything. So I'm gonna go and get it all over here. So let's start putting this back together again. So this side is definitely the hardest one because we've got loads of wiring. You've got all the wiring for the um, for the washer and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to get all the wiring in the correct positions. So the lights were a bit of a pain because they were like totally smashed. So trying to see where they go on was quite annoying because obviously I didn't have the new bolts for these ones. But luckily, because they snapped off in the brackets, they had the old bolts in there which are three bolts which look like this, which luckily I would have never, never have uh, known if they weren't actually in the old bracket. So luckily they snapped off in the old brackets. I've checked that they're working. They are different, they're different insides. So I had to change all the insides around a little bit in that one. Not a good, big enough job to warrant to, you know, film it, but I had to change them all around. So they're twisty balls where in that light, they weren't. Little break, got a pizza. So this is how we're looking. It's looking like a car again, which is awesome. I love the front of these uh, W204 Mercs. I think the C63 AMGs are fucking beautiful as well. Maybe one day, but it's M3 for now. We're going to get a load of deionized DI &I's water and we're going to run it and see, obviously get it up to temperature and let it pressurise and see if it's popping out of there. If it starts leaking out of there, then we're going to have to get that fixed. Now, when I had my E-Class Merc, I had a coolant pipe pop off uh, and it was a nightmare. These cars are a pain to bleed. There's just so many different coolant channels. Uh, they're a pain to bleed. I was actually bleeding my Merc for the time of like over a week. So I bled it, it'd be fine. Drive it, lose coolant, top it up. And it was, weren't going anywhere. It was just being soaking into the places that just a single bleed doesn't do. So uh, definitely keep an eye on that for myself and also for other people doing it as well. Got good news and bad news. The good news is it's not leaking anywhere. And other good news, there was always a little bit of a rattle. And I found a rattle when you revved it. <laughs> not like engine wise, but like if you didn't know much about cars, you think something's wrong with the car. It was basically just this rattling and that. So 
that's good news there's actually nothing wrong with the engine i'm just revving it it sounds sweet but this bit here there is an ever so slight leak from it okay so i'm filming this on my iphone quickly because i can't be asked to get my camera upstairs we've um I had a thought when I was upstairs to just if I can get a longer pipe and just push it over the top of that and then push it over the top of this. So we've gone next door to Bennett's and we've got a, uh, it's a 16 mil internal diameter. So we're going to put that over the top of it, clamp it down. And we're going to cut this uh, here and then clamp it over the top of that bit there. So we're basically just creating an, a, a new line. So hopefully it works. We've just tested it. It should do. So let's see. Right. So that's what we've done with the hose. There was a little stupid restrictor in there and um, it was we we don't know what it was but we put it back in right so we're uh, we're not leaking under here which is good uh, and was also worried about the the the, the coat not getting through the restrictor but it's uh, it's getting hot and the water's getting hot in there so before we conk out a fuel for being a diesel i'm going to turn it off and we're going to call that a great success we're going to end this video here on the next video it's going to be getting us some more parts thanks for watching everyone i hope you're enjoying this um it's what i've spent so far is very little uh, granted when i had the painting it's gonna be very expensive um because finding parts that are in white are really expensive it's probably cheaper just getting normal ones and just painting them you can actually find bumpers really cheap as well on the internet for that as well so the not most expensive thing is the bonnet the bonnet's the most expensive thing uh, as an individual part but nonetheless we're going to get it all tucked up i actually really like this car and then we're going to give it a proper clean we might be taking it down to juicy details and and give it a proper sort of polish up and everything and make it actually look really good and then in the end when it's all done i'm going to go over what it's all cost me uh, and if i wanted to buy one of these cars how much would i have saved um so yeah i hope you enjoy the content i'm actually having a great time with this thanks for watching love you all see you next time